And you're talking about uh, the state of the nation after the BBI report. And I want us to delve into some of the specifics in the report. And um, when you hear of the position of uh, the Prime Minister, I know you had touched on it a little bit, uh, but do you think these are areas that would require a referendum or are they supposed to just be pursued uh, through Parliament? As proposed, I don't think that we should even need a constitutional amendment. What the BBI has proposed is a sort of a super minister who is in charge and mm -hmm. who is a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Then that minister, uh, that minister then would be the prime minister. Mm -hmm. We have a similar situation because C.S. Matiang is sort of a super minister. Mm -hmm. He chairs sub cabinet meetings. Mm -hmm. The only disconnect is that he's not a member of parliament. Right. So why not let us continue with a pure presidential system mm -hmm. and let the super minister be outside of parliament just like it is today mm -hmm. so that we don't have to tamper with our constitution mm -hmm. merely because you want an added position. Mm -hmm. It can still be with a technocrat not going to parliament. And when you come to the office of uh, the opposition, mm -hmm. that office is currently called leader of minority and it's occupied by uh, the Honorable Bandi. And I think because of the handshake, mm -hmm. there's been, we are sort of operating an unofficial coalition government. Therefore, the people who are supposed to be oversighting government are the most ardent supporters of the government policies. So we are not seeing that, um, that uh, oversight role. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the public may be uh, forgiven for thinking that there is no opposition leader. There is the office of official opposition, but not called official opposition in a presidential system. Okay. It is called leader of minority. Mm -hmm. He has an office. Mm -hmm. He has vehicles. He has facilities mm -hmm. to ensure that the oversight role of the minority party, minority just means um, the opposition party, really, mm -hmm. the opposition leadership in parliament is not undermined so yeah you, you said that you would not advocate for that but the report uh, appears to suggest that for us to uh, to achieve inclusivity yeah. is by picking the first runners up to parliament to become the leader of opposition and to pick a prime minister from parliament but uh, that can be organized by parties because if you want the leader of the party to be in parliament, then probably we could allow the, the, them to be on the party list. You see? And it is possible. So that you, you run for presidency but also on the party list? Although that is not allowed under this system, we can have an amendment to allow mm -hmm. the presidential candidates mm -hmm. to also be on the party list okay. so, so that the leaders of the party are able to be mm -hmm. in parliament. So, in your view, yeah. some of those uh, radical if I may call them so, changes, especially when you're talking about the structure of the executive, would they require a parliamentary um, process if they are to be taken through as they are? Let me say this. I think at the end of the day, some of the things being suggested, mm -hmm. because it will affect the functions of parliament, mm -hmm. it will still require a referendum. Okay. And for me, because there are so many things unimplemented, mm -hmm. including on inclusivity, mm -hmm. this parliament and the executive, and even the judiciary, mm -hmm. the entire government mm -hmm. has failed to see the importance of gender inclusivity in parliament. Mm -hmm. I think the time is not ripe for a constitutional amendment. Let us discuss these things while committing to implement first, okay. so that when we achieve full implementation, mm -hmm. if we still find mm -hmm. that those questions are li li lingering, Mm. then we can sit down and agree whether it's time to open. Mm -hmm. Because for me, if we are a nation that does not obey the laws it passes, even if you pass another amendment, what guarantee do you have that we are going to obey it? Mm -hmm. So let us focus on implementation, on making this a nation that upholds constitutionalism, which is following the constitution mm -hmm. and the rule of law. Okay. which is following our laws. Mm -hmm. As we have a national conversation on changing our behavior, our political culture, which is tearing the nation apart, where we are taking power to belong to the leaders, to use as they like, where we are forgetting the issues mm -hmm. that affect the common person. And here I want to say without batting an eyelid that both 
Veki Yeleweke and Tanga Tanga group, none of them is mm -hmm. focusing on the needs of the people. They are involved in power games and power struggle. So do not let the public not be deceived that any of those groups is for the people. The people are on their own. And so is yes. the BBI the answer? No, it is not. Because the BBI is also trying to suggest positions for the political class. I think that was the highlight. If you've really sent to the conversation among parliamentarians on both sides, and if you, if you listen to the comment of uh, the workers' uh, voice, Francis Atori, which is another meter for the pro, -BB, for the pro handshake group, mm -hmm. you will see that they are focusing on only the leadership positions, right. not on anything else. Mm -hmm. So let the public not be deceived that there is any group that is interested in their welfare. So whether you take the matter to parliament or you are taking it to the referendum, mm -hmm. the leaders are going to only talk about what matters to them and deceive the public that there is anything in for them. So what is there for the public is full implementation of the constitution. Whether you take 30%, mm -hmm. like the government says, they take almost 30% to the counties. Mm -hmm. You can add it to 35 without having a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. But what we need more right now is proper spending of that money in the county government and proper spending of public money at the national level. Mm -hmm. So it's all about transparency, accountability, which has a whole chapter in the Constitution on leadership and integrity. Mm -hmm. There's a chapter on management of finances. There's a chapter on public leadership. Why aren't we implementing the Constitution to achieve the dream? Because mm -hmm. the BBI is resuscitating part of the dream of Kenyans when they enacted the 2010 Constitution. Interesting that I should say that there's nothing for the people, yet yeah. the proponents, um, some of the proponents of uh, this uh, BBI and how it should be implemented are saying that it should be a people-led process. The document needs to be taken to the people. Let it be taken to the people without any micromanagement, like I said, mm -hmm. and let us have now this conversation with the people mm -hmm. where we can break down the recommendations, mm -hmm. where we can be able to show mm -hmm. that what they are saying is what is in this chapter, and if only we implemented it, mm -hmm. and that we, the people, also have a role to play mm -hmm. in faithful implementation of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. If the people are aware mm -hmm. of the things not done, mm -hmm. they will find the, the, they will become mm -hmm. the force that ensures that these things are implemented. Right. So insofar as a national conversation is being recommended, mm -hmm. I agree entirely. But that national conversation must be people driven, okay. not driven. By, by the, the political class, yes. The BBI task force, in uh, part of its report, uh, quotes, uh, I want to quote, take a, make a quote from the report, says that uh, Kenya is running out of time. Our political and economic systems have failed. We have to change the way we are going if we are to avoid a catastrophic future. We are capable of doing so, but we are, uh, we are, we are our stumbling block. Ourselves, we are our stumbling block. And if this is the appreciation of where the country is, therefore, yeah. Are we learning anything from all these task forces and reports and fora that we engage in? That is now the conversation we must have because there is a part where the citizens need also to, to, to get involved. They are the ones who elect leaders. Mm -hmm. And it is time we started conversing. What is going wrong? The constitution says you elect leaders of integrity. Is that what we are doing right from the world level? And the answer is no. From the world to the highest level, we are not following the things we agreed upon. To that extent, a national conversation is needed urgently, mm -hmm. but a conversation that leaves room mm -hmm. for people to air divergent opinion mm -hmm. without fear or favor, for us mm -hmm. to actually agree this is the way we go. Mm -hmm. Because if the stumbling block is ourselves, then we are talking of the our culture, the political, social culture we have created. Right. And yet, we are a people mm -hmm. who, when committed, can move mountains. If you remember the euphoria of 2002, the public going to reclaim KICC from Kanu mm -hmm. and not vandalizing it and handing it over to the government. To the, government. Mm -hmm. the public coming to Uhuru Park in such large numbers 
and you didn't hear of a single person trampled upon. Mm -hmm. You know, people organizing themselves to behave well. Those campaigns had minimal violence, yet the turnout was so high. Do, we are a nation mm -hmm. when motivated, mm -hmm. we can actually manage ourselves better. Do you think Kenyans yeah. can actually get back to such kind of a spirit that yes. they want to commonly get to a common agenda? Two words, hope and trust. If Kenyans are energized to again hope that they can do better, and hope comes when there is a critical mass, how did we get hope in 202? It is when the large group came from Kanu, joined the opposition, mm. and the opposition now, everybody could see this is a group you can't beat. So the Kenyans immediately had hope that this time it is possible. They saw possibilities, not impossibilities. So today if we have a critical mass of Kenyans mm -hmm. rooting for the right thing, hope will come back. Mm -hmm. If we have a crop of leaders mm -hmm. whom Kenyans can trust, mm -hmm. that yes, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. You will see national energies galvanized, not to the resignation of these things will never change. It doesn't matter whom I elect. Watch and ipatiwe kitu kidogo. But, 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 but see, Honorable Karua, you see? I mean, it's, it's sort of history repeating itself yeah. because, yes, there was hope in 2002, yeah. but then in 2005, after the referendum of that year, there was fallout. And, uh, hope was destroyed uh, yes. by us, the political cl class, mm -hmm. when we started bickering. Mm -hmm. Where there are divisions, even now these divisions mm -hmm. are a terrible recipe mm -hmm. for attempting a constitutional review mm -hmm. when there are divisions. Mm -hmm. This will definitely bring us mm -hmm. to the 205 scenario mm -hmm. you see and that is why i'm saying let us have a national conversation mm -hmm. but let us go easy mm -hmm. on any changes until we first implement mm -hmm. it also gives us time to heal ourselves okay. because already we are divided mm -hmm. and the culprit is the political class we are the ones who have taken away hope from the people right by our bickering mm -hmm. and daily indoctrinating the people that the answer to this is you fighting this group yeah, the and leaving this other group, which is not true. Let, let's yeah. quickly look at uh, one of the proposals in the BBI report is about uh, how to fight against, the fight against corruption, to enhance the fight against corruption. Yeah. And the pro one of the proposals is to strengthen the judiciary as an anti-corruption tool. And they say to create the position of special magistrates and judges to deal with the most grievous cases of drug trafficking, corruption, terrorism, and other serious uh, offenses. And th there will be special security arrangements for such magistrates. So if you are to focus on, I don't know what you can do to the judiciary. The new thing there uh -huh. is only suggesting security. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because already we have special anti-corruption courts. Mm -hmm. The judiciary, the executive, parliament, the 2010 constitution was supposed to birth new institutions. Mm -hmm. But we have corrupted those institutions right mm -hmm. at the place of appointment. Mm -hmm. We manipulate appointment processes, mm -hmm. so we end up with some very good appointments mm -hmm. and some very terrible appointments. And this weaken the institutions. The institutions are strong, are weak, we go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And right now, you have some people doing great work in the judiciary. You have others pulling it back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need a law for a judge or a magistrate to know that it is wrong to keep cases dragging for years. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a big workload, mm -hmm. why do you want to start every case that comes before you mm -hmm. without finishing? Mm -hmm. Why should we have murder cases, high profile murder cases mm -hmm. that have completed one year mm -hmm. and we are not seeing an end in sight? Why should we have high profile corruption cases mm -hmm. and the holders, some of them have returned back to their offices mm -hmm. and they are dragging on? Mm -hmm. We are almost making murder and corruption fashionable because you can go to court mm -hmm. and go back to your loot you can murder or be accused of high crime and go back to office and start moralizing to people to talking to people in public meetings mm -hmm. these are the things that are wrong you and since all these judicial officers these people in the executive and in parliament are employed by the people and their powers come from the people as per our constitution mm -hmm. they ought to focus on what the people need and be true servants of the people. So we need a change in our culture 
of missing appointments. We need to be true to the nation as professionals. Okay. And I am voting some of the professionals in all those institutions. You appear to suggest that nothing really needs change structurally or even uh, legally. And I mean, Nasir Abdullahi tweeted recently that uh, whether BBI reports will be adopted through a referendum or parliament is a monumental constitutional question. Yeah. And it will not be decided by Uhuru Kenyatta, Ruto, Raila, or Raila. That question will be decided by a five judge bench and may go all the way to the Supreme Court. And you retweeted and said that. Um, on a technicality. Uh, where it will be decided on a technicality. Have you lost faith in, in the judiciary? Let me say this. I have said there are people who are doing great work in the judiciary. I have lost faith in government. And government has three institutions. Mm -hmm. It has the judiciary, parliament, and the executive. Mm -hmm. It means that the bad side of those three institutions right. is having a chokehold on mm -hmm. the institutions. It's almost running down the institutions. Mm -hmm. Before things go beyond where they are, because they can't be salvaged. We can salvage ourselves. Okay. We can monitor each other legally. Mm -hmm. There is something we can do. Mm -hmm. And we need to get things done. Imagine that even in the judiciary, when the Judicial Service Commission um, in recent cases uh, uh, disciplined mm -hmm. magistrates, mm -hmm. the court, the same courts, returned the magistrates to work. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we must have a system where the disciplinary process is allowed to take place. Mm -hmm. And if you have a complaint, then you now go to the justice system. Right. So we can see mm -hmm. areas where we ourselves are messing mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the law it has not something to do with who we are projecting ourselves to be now at the end of the day it appears that it's up to the people the voter themselves i don't know how they have uh, some feedback to take a look at on um, what kenyans are saying on twitter citizen tv kenya as well as on sms line 22422 if you have some of them, we can sample them. This is on SMS line. De Degwa Kamau, morning. Ask Martha why she has chosen to go silent on choosing people across the country whom she would work with to realize her dream of getting us uh, Kenya where we all desire to be. He, he's talking about your uh, political future and plans. Uh, Titus from Zimmerman. I just love Martha Karua's level of honesty and boldness. I believe she deserves to be the governor of Kirinyaga. She is mature and does not follow the tribal kingpins blindly. Anonymous, you don't say who you are. I would like to sample this to Honorable Karua to elaborate. The BBS suggests that the PM will be appointed by the president from the majority political party in parliament or the largest coalition of parties. Question is, assuming the president is from the same majority party as the PM, will that promote inclusivity? And you continue to say, secondly, what if the president and PM are from different parties with opposing policies? How will this work? A recipe for chaos as witnessed during the grand coalition where there was frequent deadlock on key issues and appointments. They don't say who they are. What's your reflection on that question? Well, um, I am not silent. I'm at work, but the time has not come okay. for me to declare anything. Mm -hmm. There is no election at hand. Okay. So I'm at work and now Kenya is at work. Okay. On uh, the comments regarding whether inclusivity will be promoted, mm -hmm. if the president and the prime minister are from the same party? Mm -hmm. Definitely not, not in the manner suggested by BBI. Okay. But I'm saying, let's have that conversation, but not focusing on constitutional amendment, mm -hmm. focusing just like the BBI captures, mm -hmm. that uh, we lack national ethos. We don't lack, they're in the constitution, we just don't follow them. Right. So let's have a conversation on what we can do All right. so that we can realize the dreams of Kenyans as enacted in the 2010 constitution. constitution. Yes. Martha Karua, thank you so much for making time for us on Daybreak to reflect on the, where the country has come, or uh, how far we are. And thank you for uh, staying on. faithful to the Daybreak once uh, every time that we invite you and wish well thank in the you. end of the year. Thank you. We take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking to Willis Raburu, who'll be having something about uh, comedy, I believe. So be sure to catch that conversation in the next few minutes. But you can continue to tweet us at uh, Citizen TV Kenya, uh, Sam Gituk at Willis Raburu. The hashtag to use is Daybreak or text us uh, via 22422. Bye for now.